it's probably one of the most dynamic fields in 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 AD biomarkers right now. So um, probably every second week there will be novel data coming out of um, you know the notorious groups. Uh, so this, there's lots and lots of evidence that that uh, p tau seems to change early in the disease course. Um, we and many other groups have shown this uh, repeatedly, and that's true for the p tau uh, or, or tau phosphorylated epitope 181, but probably even more so for um, p tau uh, 231. Also, 217 has been shown um, to be you know changing very early, early and being a very robust diagnostic measure, but um, there's also evidence that it might not only be down to the epitope, but rather the assay, um, deciding on, you know, how could these uh, markers actually work both as a prognostic and a diagnostic marker. So I think it, we still need prospective validation studies to really find out. So I'm not really, I don't want to speak to this race, you know, uh, between the different epitopes and assays. I think there are lots of promising out there and there's lots of novel data coming out all the time. Um, but right now, it seems like PTAU is definitely something that um, changes early during the disease and seems to be a, a quite robust um, diagnostic mark for Alzheimer's disease. One problem with, with most of the blood-based biomarker studies at this point is that the knowledge we have on those is almost exclusively from studies where um, the biomarkers were analyzed in one batch which is not necessarily representative of a clinical routine lab, right? So you would have analyses every day, or every week. So um, the robustness across different batches, across different sample analyses will definitely um, be maybe more important even uh, in, in clinical practice or in real life settings than, you know, if you have an AUC of 0.89 or 0.91, depending on the assay or the epitope you're actually examining. Uh, and again, it might just be down to the cohorts, you know, that have been assessed. Uh, so and, unless we have very robust uh, prospective studies that use harmonized protocols and assess the batch to batch uh, variability or the analytical variability, I think we need to take all of these um, very exciting and very promising information, but we still need to take it with a grain of salt, I think.